The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. I'm down in Blenheim, Ontario today. We're uh, visiting with Joe DeBrower and of course, Mazix agronomist Greg Stewart. Greg, we're going to talk detasseling today. Why are we talking detasseling <laughs> on the sharp edge? Well, I'm often amazed how people don't have a good understanding of how complicated seed corn production can be. And so today, one of the key steps in seed corn production is in fact detasseling, and we're going to see Joe DeBrower do his thing. Awesome. Let's put Joe to work. Hey Joe, thanks for joining us on the Sharp Edge today. Great to be out here with you. Well, thanks for coming out. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about detasseling. Yep. Uh, you've got into this detasseling game. How long you've been doing it? And tell us a little bit about the operation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got into detasseling. Uh, this is the fourth season now. Uh, the opportunity arose when uh, there was an expansion with Mazex Seeds in the Blenheim uh, facility. Right. So I, I contract for their acres around the uh, the Blenheim Chatham area. And uh, yeah, this is the, the fourth season. Nice. So tell us about, uh, it's sort of a two-step process, right? You bring this unit through and you cut the tops of the plants and then you come back and actually do the pulling that we're looking at today. Uh, talk to us about the timing and how that all works for you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to start, we, we come through, it's essentially just a, a lawnmower deck that uh, is on this machine as well. And it, it comes through and, and uh, levels the field up. Uh, we're looking to cut maybe the most advanced ones, say in half or, or a third, and that will uh, give the, the shorter, less advanced plants time to, to grow up and, right. uh, and, and hopefully increase our chances of a of good pull with the uh, pulling attachments. So how many days do you cut before you would come back with the actual puller? Uh, on average, it's uh, two days. It depends the variety, growing conditions. If you have cool nights, it, it might be a third day. If you have really warm nights, it could be the next day. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. And so now we're we're in the pulling operation. Uh, what's your, what's your time frame? D do you run mornings, afternoons, evenings? Does it matter? And and how many acres can you pull in a day? Yeah. So uh, it's it's mostly an all day event. It's, right. Uh, usually there's a, a full day of work ahead for us. So. Uh, a, a, a large day, we could do upwards of 250 acres for, for pulling, right. and uh, and cutting, we could we could do over 300 pretty handily. So wow, cool. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the nuts and bolts of the machine here. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Joe, this is the uh, plant that's going to produce seed. Yep. This would be the female inbred. Yep. We don't want its pollen involved in the operation. That's we only correct. want the pollen from the male plant, and so we've got to pull that tassel out of there. And uh, there we are. Just kind of comes out like that, yep. right? Yep. So, in your machine, if we look over at your machine, essentially these rubber wheels uh, do that for you, right? Yes, exactly. Tassel gets caught up in between those rubber wheels. Yep. And out it comes. Absolutely. Ideally, we, we like to leave as many leaves on the plant sure. as possible. Right. To aid in yield. Yep. So uh, there's definitely. So you're, some... you're trying to you're trying to get it just at the spot there where you can pull the tassel yep. out without taking out too much of the plant. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So this year we're dry in Ontario. Yep. Fields are more variable than yes, we'd like are. them. They're more variable probably in the fields you're you're cutting and pulling as well. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you keep this machine uh, adjusting for a variable field? Absolutely. Can, we, can, yeah. can you show us yeah. that? So here we have uh, the uh, the row unit. There's two rows that are actuated uh, together and uh, if, as you can see here we have electronic eyes that help uh, adjust for height differences. Right. And essentially there's two sensors. The, uh, the top of the plant will stay between the, the top and the bottom sensor. So if, it, if both sensors are covered, it'll raise. Oh, if yeah. neither of them are covered, it'll lower. So that, that aids in, uh, in, in doing a, a good job with variable right, right. variable fields. And in a variable field, of course, you'd, there'd be no way you could adjust the header no. yourself. Yeah. You've got to rely on this automatic Absolutely. to allow you Absolutely. to do a good job of pulling the pulling the tassel, yep, right? Absolutely. And so four rows at a time in terms of, uh, of, of these four rows yes. are in a yes. bank here. Yep. And then if we move on down the unit a little bit, there's a gap here Yep. because this will be where the male row has to run and yes. you don't obviously want to cut the tassel off the male inbred. Yep. And then another four rows. Yep. 
and then we repeat that one more time. Yeah. Right. Four four and one pattern. There's there's some right. seed fields on a, a four and two pattern. Right. Primarily uh, a four and one pattern for uh, for our seed fields in this area. And so you're doing essentially uh, 12, uh, 12 rows and leaving uh, and leaving the males as you go down the Absolutely. field. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Very good. And what's your travel speed generally? If it's a like, do you have to slow down if it's a more variable field to allow the automatic height control to do its job, or yes. do you travel the same speed all the time? Absolutely. No, it, it depends on the variability of the field. Uh, if it's if it's a perfectly uh, consistent field, you can see speeds of up to uh, 15 miles an hour for cutting. Yeah. And uh, on the pulling side, up to uh, at best maybe eight miles an hour. That's in perfect conditions. Obviously, right. that speed comes down pretty quickly with uh, with variability. When you've got variability, you yep. got to slow it down to yep. allow it to do its job. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, awesome machine. So, Joe, good operation here. Uh, tell us a little bit about after you've cut, after you've pulled. Is the job done? There must be some tassels that even skip your operations a little bit, get, get through the cracks. Yeah, absolutely. So with uh, the mechanical detasseling machines, we can get pulling percentages anywhere from 50 to 95 percent. So uh, in order to clean that up, knowing that the, there can't be a single female tassel in the field, right? The, uh, there's detasseling crews that come through afterwards anywhere from two to three times to uh, clean up any less advanced plants that uh, are, are about to tassel and, and uh, just make sure there's no, no right. female tassels. So these crews left. would have to walk every row yep. checking to make sure there were no tassels that escaped your operations. Absolutely, right. absolutely, yep. And it's all uh, inspected by uh, federal inspection agencies to ensure seed purity. So there's uh, yeah, zero, zero tassel policy. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, because I guess in, in the big scheme of things, if you have a tassel that's out there from, uh, from, from your female inbred, and it starts spreading pollen around, that's no longer gonna be a hybrid anymore. No, right? absolutely. It, it can only have the tassel from the, from the male inbred. Absolutely. absolutely. Cool, cool. Hey, Joe, uh, this has been a fun afternoon. Thanks so much for being with us on the Sharp Edge. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Greg, I had a chance to ride around this field with Joe, you know, watch that machine in action. What I learned is you gotta do it right. Yeah, no room for error in this uh, detasseling uh, process. If you're going to make the hybridization process work in the field, you got to be 100%. Yeah, and the other thing I learned is detasseling is only one small piece of making a bag of corn. A lot of work to do. Yeah, so, you know, I get a few slings and arrows thrown at me because a, a bag of seed corn is $300 uh, a bag. And, uh, you know, today we saw a bit of a glimpse into all of the effort it takes to make a stellar bag of hybrid seed corn. Awesome stuff. Hey, a great episode of The Sharp Edge. We will see you next time.